Hey everybody, Green Lava Productions here, and today what I'm going to be showing you is how to color uh, one live paint group using multiple gradients, but not just that, but also editing each individual gradient within that one live paint group. And as you can see, what I've got here is an eye, because it looks great on a thumbnail video, uh, as I've noticed from my original um, tutorial video. So I've got an eye, and basically, as you can see, I've got a bunch of different gradients going on here. I've got uh, one here with the uh, eyeball itself, and then I've got one here with the iris, and then I've got one with the pupil. Yeah, the iris and the pupil. I don't really know. Maybe this is the iris or this is the pupil. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. But uh, And then I've got another gradient right up here with the eyebrow. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to do it within one live paint group. So if I turn this stroke off, you can see that I've got this all within one live paint group. So let's get started. So if I go over here, you can see this is the stroke that I started with. Um, basically, I just used my calligraphy brush tool or my just my regular brush tool, and I used different sizes and shapes. And I made this bottom part of the eye a stroke of none, so that's why you can't see it. Um, but I'm going to include that in my live paint when I when I make that. So what I'm going to do is. I've got all of my stroke on one layer right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to duplicate it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click to the right of this circle here, uh, which says Indicate Selected Art, click to Select Art, and if I do that, you can see that there's this big box that gets illuminated. And with this layer it's green, yours might be blue or others might be a different color, but uh, it just depends on what uh, layer you choose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to command C to copy and on Windows it could be control C. Um, I imagine, don't <laughs> don't take my word for that, but uh, usually that's the way it goes. But anyway, I'm going to hit uh, command C and I'm going to make a new layer by clicking on this button here. Um, that's going to create a new blank layer above that and I'm going to paste in place. Um, now there's two ways to do that. You could go edit paste in place, or you could go uh, shift command V on the Mac, or control V for Windows, I don't really know. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to click here, paste in place, just because it's better visually. So now what it's done is you, it's created a duplicate of whatever I copied on the first layer onto my layer above. And if I turn this layer on and off, you can see that nothing changes, because it's basically the same thing. And if I do the same thing with the second layer, you can see that nothing changes because, again, it's basically the same thing. So um, that's what I want to do because I'm going to preserve my stroke. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to double-click on this top layer. I'm going to type stroke, and I'm going to lock it. And then I'm going to go to my next layer underneath, and I'm going to type fill. And I'm not going to lock it because I'm, that's what I'm going to use for my live paint group right now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything within this, and I can do the same thing by clicking that, or I could do this and just select all of it using my select tool, but I just want to make sure everything is selected. Um, and once you do that, what you can do is you can go into your live paint bucket right here, uh, which is, the shortcut for that is K on the keyboard, and if you don't see it, if you click on this panel, um, you should be able to find it around where the Shape Builder tool and the Live Paint Selection tool is. So click on the Live Paint Bucket tool, and what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to stick, I'm going <laughs> to hover it over here, and it's just going to say uh, click to make a Live Paint group, and I'm going to click, and it's going to give me this dialog that tells me that any complex stuff that I have going on is going to go away, and that's fine. Hit OK. And the reason I said that's fine is because even though I do have some complex stroke work going on, I turn that fill off, no, sorry, if I turn this stroke off up top, you can see um, that it, in fact, has gotten rid of my complex stroke work. So that's why I kept that stroke above it, so that it preserves that. And I keep that right above where the fill is going to be. Um, so I don't get rid of any um, nice little stroke effect that I've got going on. So what I'm going to do is, now that I've got my uh, live paint group, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to start painting using different gradients. Um, and what I'm going to do, if you go back to my original one, is I'm going to draw the eyeball using a gray to white. And the gray is going to be on top and the white's going to be at bottom. 
and the eyeball is going to be dark brown and light brown and then like a lighter brown here that's there's no gradient going on here so this is going to be easy and then this is kind of a black to gray in the in the middle here and this is going to be a brown to dark brown above where the eyebrow is and for you it doesn't have to be the same thing in fact i'll probably make it a different color you know just for kicks anyway Let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating my first gradient and I'm going to, if I click on my lathe paint tool, you can see that I've got a solid in my foreground and a, and a uh, solid in my background. And what I want to do is I want to select gradient. And there's a, there's a spot right here next to this solid color called gradient. So I want to click on that. And what it does is if you look down here, if you don't have this open, go to window gradient but I have this down here and it shows me what gradient I'm using and this is a default white to black um, what I want to do is I'm gonna keep the white but I want to do a dark or a light gray on the other side because I'm gonna do my uh, eyeball first so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click um, on this and I'm going to go into my swatches here so I can choose a nice shade of gray and choose maybe this one or this one. I don't want it to be too dark, but I don't want it to be too light. I think that's probably okay. Yeah, I'll use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start coloring here. And as soon as I do this, you can notice that I'm going to just do this side and this side, but uh, it's going to go left to right so it's going to be white on the left and gray on the right and the same way on this side but I don't want that I want it to be top to bottom and what you could do is you could go and use your gradient tool and that might actually work because I don't have um, more than one gradient going on right now but if I go into my gradient tool and I make sure everything in my fill group is selected my live paint group is selected and I do this yeah, that works. It works okay if you've only got one gradient, but there arises a problem when you've got more than one. So I'm just going to do this for now. I think that looks good. I've got a dark gradient on top, or I mean I've got a darker gray on top, and I've got a white at the bottom. I'm going to deselect everything, and that's okay. All right, so I've got my eyeball colored, and the next thing I'm going to do, and this is when we run into problems, is I'm going to color my eyeball itself and so when I do that I'm just gonna go ahead and choose an, a better gradient for that and I think we did brown last time or at least I did brown last time so I'm going to I think I'll do blue I'll do blue today so I'm gonna choose my first blue is gonna be a darker blue like so well, I'll do the lighter blue first. So it'll be just like a sky blue, almost cyan a little bit. That looks good. So that'll be my first color. And the next thing I want to do is I want, this is going to be my uh, light part of the eye. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the dark part. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to hit the Alt key on my keyboard and drag it. And what that did is it created a new copy of that and I guess it might work if you just yeah I think you gotta hit the alt key sometimes it works if you just uh, yeah if you see there's a little plus here if you hover over like the very right edge of it you can create a new one but I like to hit the alt key because that's what I usually use to create new things in Illustrator so I'm gonna do it that way but I'm just basically gonna take that and I'm gonna drag it all the way to the end and if you noticed, I got rid of another color that was there just because it was taking up room. And the way you can get rid of colors if you don't want them is to just take them and drag them away. Well, not this one. If there's a third color, because there's got to be two anyway. If you, if you have a third color, like in the middle, if you want to get that rid of that, you can just drag it out and it'll disappear. But anyway, I just want two colors. So this is my light part of the eye, and I'm going to click on here. And I'm just going to take this black down. K being black. Don't ask me why K is, stands for black, but it does. And I'm just going to look here and see that that looks nice. There's sort of a nice transition from light to dark. So I'm going to click out of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to color in this eyeball. 
and as you can see it's 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 done the same thing it's gone right to left or I mean left to right what I want to do is I want to keep the the dark part up here and the light part at the bottom and so if I click on it if I try to do the same thing that I did before and I take my gradient tool and I do what I did before it's gonna affect the other gradient that I've made which is my white to to gray for my eyeball which I already like and we don't want to do this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the uh, live paint selection tool to help us out with that so if we go into our live paint bucket and we click you can see that there's an option called the live paint selection tool and if we click on that what we can do is we can go into a certain live paint um, area and we can click on it and as you can see it's all shaded and what that means is that the live paint uh, area has been selected and that means that if I go in with my gradient tool now and I try to color my gradient you can see that it works the way I want it to go I want to keep the dark up here and the light at the bottom so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw it so I like it and one thing that um, is kind of hard with this is uh, the the selection is kind of hard makes it kind of hard to see the gradient that you've actually got going on and the way you can um, get rid of that is if you go into view hide edges it's going to get rid of that so it's going to make sure that the the thing is still selected but you're not actually seeing that sort of uh, selection view that's kind of clouding up my gradient so I kind of like that so I'm going to keep it that way and now the rest is just easy it's just going to be coloring uh, using that same method with the live paint selection tool so I'm going to do the same thing with my pupil in the middle by just clicking it here and one thing be careful that you turn it off once you've turned it on again because um, you're gonna get very confused why things aren't being selected but uh, I'm gonna keep it hidden for now so view hide edges or command H on your keyboard and I'm gonna basically I'm gonna start with this gradient again I'm just gonna hit the gradient tool and it's gonna fill it with that gradient but I'm just gonna go in here and edit it and so I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna turn this to black and you can just go straight to black right here so I'm gonna do that and I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to a gray, a light, sort of a dark gray, like that. Like that. There we go. So, if you notice, I'm still selected in this, in this live paint area, but it's not being shown because I've hidden my edges. Um, so I can go into my gradient tool and I can just do this as much as I want until I get the gradient that I like. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, eyebrow. So again, I'm going to go into my live paint selection tool. I'm going to click in the eyebrow. And even though nothing is being shown, it's actually selected because my edges are hidden. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into another gradient. And I'm going to keep the black, but I'm going to my next color. My lighter color is going to be... Uh, I, I used brown last time, so I'll use orange this time. Just a darker orange. Well, it's not that different from brown, is it? I don't know. That's probably okay. I'll use that. Okay, so then I'm going to go in my gradient tool, and again, this is all selected. And if I go into view, show edges, you can see that it's all still selected. It's just that it's all hidden right now. So I'm going to hide edges again, and I'm going to just sort of do, use my gradient tool to just do a nice little tint going on right here and I think that looks good and click away from that and now I'm going to color my reflection in the eyes or the light in my eyes uh, and I'm just gonna color that white so I'm gonna go into my live paint bucket or hit K I'm not gonna be in the live paint selection tool anymore and because I've already used my gradients I've already done my gradients and I'm going to go uh, view show edges so now I can actually see my edges because I use that for a lot of other things and I like to see them most of the time except for when I'm doing what I just did um, but anyway I'm just gonna color using white I'm gonna color the light here and then I'm gonna color right in here uh, using a very very pale blue like that there we go that's good 
And I think the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all of this stroke here. So there's a stroke here, 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 and here. And that was just made so that I could uh, get all this stuff in a live paint group. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to select everything within my fill. And I'm going to get rid of all of my stroke. I'm not going to get rid of it, but I'm going to turn all of it to none. And the way I'm going to do that is once I've got everything in my fill selected, I'm going to go into my stroke option on my layer panel, I think is what it's called. And then I'm going to hit none. And what that did is it made every stroke in my live paint group disappear. And if I turn this off, you can see that there's no stroke anymore, which is what I want because I'm not really going to use my stroke in my live paint group. This is just for colors. And then I'm going to turn this on again, and I'm going to lock my fill so I don't edit it accidentally, and I'm going to go into Stroke. I'll unlock Stroke, and then I'm going to go into it, and I'm going to, using my Select tool, I'm just going to select all of this stroke in the middle here, because I don't want to see that. And I'm just going to turn all of this to None, like that. And you could get rid of it by just deleting it, and it would work fine as well, but I'm just going to do it this way so all the stroke is preserved. It's just set to a stroke of none. And there we go. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you liked the video, and uh, let me know if there's anything else you want me to explore uh, later on. I know this is kind of a work in progress, but uh, I kind of enjoy doing this, and hopefully I'll get better with time. So uh, this video isn't quite as long as the other one, but hopefully it helped you uh, with whatever you, want, whatever you wanted to do. So until next time.